Hello, everyone. Welcome to discussion six walkthrough video. Today, we're going to be talking about disjoint sets and asymptotics. I hope you have a good week, and we are going to look at this really exciting material together. First things first, some announcements. Uh, our weekly survey is due on Monday, as always. Um, Regrade requests are also due on Monday. Those are actually probably closed by the time you're watching this video because I released it on Wednesdays, but hopefully you got those and if you needed them and you should hear back by tonight, Wednesday. Um, the project checkoff was also due Tuesday and lab six is due this upcoming Friday. And my last note for you is start project two ASAP. Start Gitlet now. Gitlet is a really hard project. It's not something that you can just put off at the last second. Please today, just read the spec. It's okay if you don't start today. It's okay if you don't start for a couple more days, but read the spec and start thinking about this because it's a pretty tough um, problem and you're going to have to do a lot of heavy lifting to make it happen, but it's a really awesome project. Like you learn a lot, so you'll have fun. Content review. Um, so I'm actually going to link Anjali's video in the description of this and Anjali's video will cover the content review as well as parts um, 1A, 1B, 1C of problem one. Then back on this video, we'll go over 1D. And then Anjali's video will also cover all of problem two. And it's worth noting that um, Anjali's video does slightly different. Um, the function names are a little different and um, it's a little different. It's pretty much the same thing. And I am linking Anjali's video because it's beautiful. It's already made. Um, so why would I go redo it? And that is that. So go watch Anjali and then you can come back for part 1D. Hi, I hope you had a great time watching Anjali's videos and we are going to quickly go over part 1D. So disjoint sets. First, we wanna know what is the runtime for connect and is connected operations using our quick find, quick union and weighted quick union ADTs. And so if we recall, the quick find was where we keep track of sets um, by giving each item a set number. The quick union improves upon this by keeping track of an item's parent rather than the set number. And the weighted quick union um, is like a quick union, but when we're joining two sets, we do it by size. And so we say that the bigger set becomes the parent and the smaller set becomes the child. And so we wanna know the runtime of our connect and is connected operations for each of these. So first we have quick find. And so for the quick find, connect, let's think about it. Imagine we have two sets, right? and we want to connect them. And so all the items in the first set are in set one. And so we can imagine like items zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, there are six items. And so let's say items um, zero through three are all in set zero. And so they would all have a zero as their value. And let's say items four through six are in set one. So they all have a one as the value at their like respective spot in the array. And now we wanna connect them, which means that they all have to belong to the same set now. And if we wanna make them all in the same set, we have to change all of the elements set IDs. And so in this example, that was only three elements, it was fine. But you can imagine if I had 1000 elements in each set and I wanted to join the two sets, I'm gonna have to change 1000 set IDs. And so that is an operation that is linear in the number of items in our um, weighted quick union. Because in general, we can say it's proportional to the number of items. If we had a lot of items, odds are we're going to be um, doing a lot more is like set ID changes. And so this is theta n or linear. Now the is connected here is actually pretty fast. Right? If I wanna know if two elements are in the same set, let's say I wanna know if elements one and five are in the same set, I simply go to those indices in our underlying array and I'll check and see what the value there is. And if it's the same, that must mean they're in the same set. And so this is actually pretty fast because array access is constant for us. So we can say that this is theta one. Okay, cool. What about the quick union? Now again, the quick union was pretty similar. 
Except now, instead of having the set IDs, we would keep track of the parents here, right? And so this meant we had some sort of like underlying tree sort of structure where we could say if zero's parent was one, that would go here and one's parent is two and maybe two is the root. So it gets a size negative three because it's the parent of a set that's of size three. And then let's say all of the rest of these have um, five as the parent. And so five is the head of a set that's of size four. So it gets negative four. That's very cool. And so we see that there's this like natural tree like structure, right? But the limiting factor here is the height of our tree. So if we recall, it's technically possible for us to um, construct sets and then connect them in a way that we could end up with a structure like this, where each one is um, its parent and it's the sort of like, it looks like a linked list, right? Because zero's parent is one, one's parent is two, two's parent is three. And so if we wanted to know, oh, what's the set of zero? Well, we'd have to follow this parent trail all the way up, right? And that is not something we can just do instantly. We'd have to follow the trail, or in other words, do an amount of um, pointer following proportional to the number of elements in our tree. And so this would be theta n, just to find the parent. And so if we consider connect operations, this means that to connect two elements, um, part of the process would be finding the parent of both elements and then connecting those. And so to find the parent of an element in a quick union with an underlying tree like this would take linear time. And so this connect operation is gonna take at least linear time. And we see that all that happens in connect is that we find the parents of the two elements we're interested in, and then we set one to be equal to the other. So it's really just this time to find the, the root of our um, like set or our set representative. And so this is linear. And very similarly is connected again, is just looking for the parent of the two elements we're interested in. And so if we want to connect them, we again have to traverse this potentially really like linked list like structure all the way from top to bottom or bottom to top, I mean, which will be linear. And so that is why we have connect and disconnected. And one thing that's worth noting is that based off the look of this, you would say, oh my gosh, like quick find is actually better than quick union, right? Like our improvements didn't even help. It made it worse because Quick find is constant here, but quick union's linear. But these are again um, estimations. And technically, if our quick union um, is like that linked list like structure, this really long chain, it will be that bad. But on in general, even if we put things in randomly, it's not going to be that um, spindly. And so on average, it will probably be better than linear, but we just can't guarantee that. Finally, we look at the weighted quick union. And so in the weighted quick union, we know that unlike the regular one, the way that we build it guarantees our tree is going to be bushy, or in other words, um, our trees will always look like, sorry, they're always gonna look like this and not like this. And so having that bushiness means that the height of our tree will be log n. This is something that was discussed in lecture, um, but you can just take it for a fact that the height will be at most log n, which means now when we do connect operations to find the parent of the current element or the set representative um, of the current element, it will only take at most log n time to traverse that. And the connect operation is just finding the parents of both elements and then setting one to be the other. So if the finding the parent takes log n, then that's as long as connect takes. So we can say this is log n. And very similarly is connected will take theta log n because we are just checking the parents of the two elements we're interested in. And so that is the quick union um, or the weighted quick union runtimes. And then really quickly, although it's not included in the question because deriving the runtimes is actually much more complicated. If we use path compression, we can get constant time for both of these operations. Um, and so that is a really cool fact. I think it's like just really brilliant that we have improved this scheme from something simple like quick find 
to eventually getting to weighted quick union with path compression, which can get us constant. Um, and so that is that. And then we want to examine really quick, why does the weighted quick union have better runtime for these operations than the regular quick union? So take a moment, pause, think about it. And then let's see if you had the right instinct. So the weighted quick union and the quick union, the only difference is that the weighted quick union has shorter heights in its underlying tree. And so because the driving force for the connect and is connected runtimes is the amount of time it takes to find the parent of our current element or the set representative of our, our current real element, um, it will only take as long as the tree is tall. And so if the weighted quick union has bushier or shorter trees, the weighted quick union will be faster. And that is problem 1D. So thank you for tuning in and have a good week.